time we're going to invite Lloyd Tillman, who's the, I always get, I want to say he's the general manager, uh, director of aviation, but he's actually operations manager of the St. Pete Clearwater International Airport. <coughs> Thank the TBA for letting us come out and speak about our hot topics and talk about all this stuff here at our airport. Uh, we too, Sinking Clearwater, has joined the uh, TBAA as a member, so we're glad to be involved in this program. Just uh, start off uh, talking a little bit about our fly friendly program for general aviation. Uh, you know, common, are there misconceptions about stereotypes about the public uh, with GA? Of course there are. We're noisy, we're loud, no one notices sirens, freight trains, or anything like that making noise, just airplanes out there, right? So why should I care about uh, airplane noise? Well, Pinellas is the most densely populated county in the state, so uh, we have residents everywhere, obviously, around the airport. And we want to keep up a good public relations uh, with our community in the area. Basically, uh, we have several residential areas all around uh, PIE. We have Safety Harbor to our north, High Point a little bit to our uh, west, Feather Sound to our east, and the lakes and mainlands in Pinellas Park to the south, as well as Clearwater a little bit to our north and, and west. And then Old Smar, which is uh, up north of us, uh, which is one of the initial approach points for some of our noise abatement areas. Uh, so basically, all areas around the airport are noise sensitive. What we ask is that you follow the uh, manufacturer's uh, noise abatement procedures. Uh, there are several fly-friendly programs out there through AOPA, NBAA, or the Helicopter Association. Uh, we're not going to go through all the procedures. Uh, as members, you guys can go in and research them on your own. Uh, but again, we're always talking about uh, flying safely and as well as being uh, friendly to the noise community. Uh, we do want to let you know about some of our local noise abatement procedures. Uh, basically, uh, when we're operating closed traffic on runway 927, uh, especially for helicopters, we do a lot of takeoff and uh, touching procedures for helicopters. We do a very tight close-in procedure basically remaining on airport property. Uh, 927 is our east-west runway there. Uh, keeping the base leg in close to the airport and then uh, uh, when we're operating on runway 422 on one of our crosswinds, that we uh, try to avoid the feather sound area immediately to the west of the airport, kind of route your pattern around that. I know it's not a standard pattern. If you need to do that because you're doing your training, uh, certainly we understand, but if it's possible to do some touch and go activity, kind of avoid flying directly over, we do appreciate that. Again, just suggested patterns, uh, and of course, air traffic control may give you ultimate instructions. One of the other things, too, that we also look out for is uh, early turnouts. Uh, everybody wants to get on their way and head right to their destination, but uh, we do ask that you avoid early turnouts uh, going to the north and heading uh, to the west. Uh, wait till you get out over the water before turning, again to the right, avoiding the feather sound to the west of us, and then to the south, the mainlands. Uh, our air carriers uh, basically go out, sorry about that, uh, about 3.5 miles to the south before they start making their turns to the west. And uh, more of our uh, basic pattern work that we try and do. Uh, make sure we get up to our pattern altitude of 810 feet. Uh, use the crosswind and up legs, upwind legs to climb instead of uh, uh, right out. That way you're at the pattern altitude when you get to, when you get there. And then uh, air traffic control permitting, vary it as much as you can, avoiding the repetition. Uh, and again, avoiding the early turnouts. We do have a voluntary quiet window. Uh, it's not a curfew, but we do request that pilots avoid flying between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. unless it's operationally necessary. Uh, we do still have people coming out doing touch and go and flight training in the middle of the night, but it's quicker and things like that, and less traffic around, but it uh, really does uh, disturb the residents, and again, we're trying to be friendly to our neighbors. And uh, again, pattern work and flight training overnight, uh, if you can avoid it, we really would appreciate it. 
again, uh, safety first, safe operation of the aircraft is the primary responsibility. Uh, we understand you want to be good neighbors and, and all that, but again, safety first with our aircraft. And again, never compromise safety. Just a little uh, area here, I want to talk about some hot topics and some things that are going on with our airfield uh, that you may be hearing about and seeing some changes. The first is uh, runway 422, again, that's our, our crosswind runway here. Uh, we've got an overlay project coming up, going to start in the uh, late summer. We'll be uh, repaving the runway, adding a new lighting system to it, and upgrading that uh, as part of that project. Um, later in the course of the project, runway 927 is actually going to be shortened about 700 feet. Uh, we'll be removing this little section of pavement, avoiding a bad geometry, and crossing the uh, intersecting runways. So that's something we've been working with the FAA on. The runway will be shortened to about uh, 4,700 feet when it's completed. We're still in the design of that right now. One of the other uh, issues that we'll be doing is much like Tampa, we are affected by the magnetic variation changes. Our north-south runway, runway 1735, actually both of them, uh, we do have a parallel daytime use runway here, which is also taxiway alpha at night. One of the few left in the country which we're working on trying to get rid of. But uh, uh, our north-south runway, 1735, will become 1836. And we're, we're targeting a publication date of October 20th. So you'll see that runway designation coming up uh, in the future. Uh, hot topics, as I mentioned, we do have a daytime use only VFR runway. It's a parallel to our main 17 right, 35 left. It's only used during the day. At night, it's taxiway alpha. It is one of the last in the countries, but it also is an area that we're also concerned about for uh, runway incursions. Uh, we're very fortunate that we haven't had any runway incursions related to it, but as a, a kind of dual use, it's, it gets kind of tough on whether you're operating on a, a runway or a taxiway. So, uh, air traffic permitting, we may be closing that down in the next few years. Uh, that's up to the FAA and air traffic on when we do decide to close that. And then one of our last projects that will be coming up in, in two to three years, we're estimating, is runway 927 will no longer be supported for funding by the FAA, being that we have an alternate cross runway, cross one one more runway in runway 422. So runway 927 will be converted to a taxiway in about uh, two to three years. Uh, there's no date set on that, but uh, because there's no funding available, uh, we don't want to take the liability of having bad pavement or, or an unmaintained uh, piece of uh, paint out there, so we'll convert that to a taxi for use. And one of the last things I'll just mention you may have heard of, we do own the Airco Golf Course. Uh, that is slated to be closed May 15th. Uh, unfortunately, we do operate that, uh, that airport, and, or that airport golf course, and just the funding isn't there. We've been losing about $130,000 a year on that golf course, and we just can't bleed out that kind of money. So uh, we've made the decision to close the golf course May 15th. So some of you do fly in for that, and uh, unfortunately that won't be available after May. The last thing I was going to mention, uh, we did bring up the uh, public and national uh, convention, and we will be outside the TFR, so we'll be the probably the closest 24-hour facility if you're flying in for that uh, event for some of the corporate operators or those that may be coming up and attending. Uh, so keep that in mind, whereas uh, there will be some flight restrictions at the other Tampa airports here, Tampa Exec, uh, Peter O'Knight and Tampa International will be just outside and probably very busy. With that, any questions I can answer about the airport, I'd be glad to. Uh, we do have our website if you'd like more information at wwwfly 2 pi And uh, we thank you for following those great. Any questions I can answer? All right, well, thank you.